them had so much energy. All of them had so much of this idea, like, yeah, it's been like, the scene has been building for five years. We've had all these offline events. Some of us have been playing since the beginning. Some of us have been quite recent, these teams. No. And now we're in the situation where, you know, we might be able to bring everything together. Let's hope this doesn't lead to a rehost as an instant. Uh, but we'll go through the bands and, and go through the motions and see where we end up. Now, uh, Thatcher, I was going to say, um, people might be wondering why these bands are so normal or, you know, meta, as people would maybe say. But I've talked to, uh, for example, Fnatic, and back then it was being said that there's a lot of EU influence in this region right here. Yeah. So I'm not totally surprised to have these, uh, have these kind of bands on. Just quickly want to notice that. Uh, mention that, not notice. <laughs> I mean, you noticed it, and then I you mentioned it. it. So you kind of did both there. Order. It's all right. I'll forgive you. They're obviously taking their time on these bands to give their player as much time as possible to get back into the game. You don't want to use your rehost this early, especially with the problems that might come forward. It was actually a, a story when we get into the next game that I can tell. I will oh. spin you a yarn of a rehost that potentially caused the team to drop down to the lower bracket. Oh, not a rehost, a player dropping. Um, unfortunately, Nomad and Mirror gone again not too strange the thing about the nomad ban as they mentioned on the desk that hints at an aggressive game that hints at a lot of motion a lot of possibility to take control of what is a very very big and deep map and i want to see them kind of living in it i want to see them basking in the aggression i want to see them moving and manipulating all of the play space getting rid of a nomad that's a great lead-in for that it's definitely a great lead-in I was just thinking, hmm, the Valkyrie is often what we see nowadays on the map like Villa, especially with a Nomad band to come in. Still some time left for the place. Oh, there he is. He joined oh. back just in time. Oh. <laughs> it's already exciting. <laughs> already, <laughs> the round hasn't even started we've yet. We've already <laughs> started. We've already started. Um, Aviator Games is where we're going to be heading to first. AVG. And as you said, there's a lot of EU influence in this region. There's a lot of EU stylings that I guess bled through because, well, I don't know if you've ever heard this set. I don't know if Siege fans have ever heard this set. EU was the region to beat. NA's, they've been looking pretty good re recently. NA's been kind of on fire. Uh, maybe the EU title isn't secure as it once was. <laughs> but either way, there was a long period of time where EU were the team to beat. And now we're looking at, okay, well, these are the lessons that they have been taking from the region that we obviously call our home. And I'm really curious again to see how it becomes their playstyle, how it becomes their game. Talking of Union Gaming, obviously one of the other teams that are up. Best of luck, Mercenaries and Monkus have fun making history. Can we get some Monka S in the chat? Just to bully Natu. Um, oh, what? I mean, did anyone solve his riddle earlier? Do we know? I think it's advice. You, you think or you know? You said it was respect, but you do not take respect. Was it BDS? <laughs> Oh, no, they don't take I was take thinking it. about it. I was like, what do you yeah, mean? I and I was know like, they oh, it. I understand this, now. Uh, I'm coming in here with all the energy in the world because, as I said before, I have been talking to these guys. I am so excited that we get the privilege to introduce these guys to the rest of I mean, the scene. We, we both come from, like, well, I mean, the UK always has a bit, you know, was a bit more developed than Benelux, but Benelux has often been, like, like seen as, like, an underdeveloped region, a new region as well. And I came from there, and, and now I'm happy to see him. I'm happy to cast the first game on the main channel right here. Well, in, 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 in the major, uh, that is. For these two teams, for this region, and I'm sure you are as well. Oh, yeah, unbelievably. Setting themselves up here for what is going to be the opening of the push, bringing obviously the dock that hasn't been spawn peaking as of yet. Whenever you see it with the big windows and angles this map can offer, we've sometimes seen a bit of a development recently where you'll dig in on these slight external holds. So, say, for example, you're playing, um, obviously, towards the trophy statue side, you dig in in the walk-in cupboard and find yourself stimming yourself up, taking as many grenades as possible. And that's when I see a dock on this map in my head. I'm thinking, well, where are they going to be playing? Because they might be in these little weird unfamiliar positions. Habana opening up the close corner, kind of the opposite of usual, but didn't do the reconnaissance needed as they swing into the corridor and Firefly takes a bit of damage, but is able to stop those first set of pellets. Putting up a second one. This is not what you should be doing right here. Second set of Excarvers going off right there and will be de well, depleted or destroyed as well by said player. And you see how close this Jackal is. Maybe you should have waited until he got into the position needed to make sure that the Excarvers could actually be used properly. I'm not sure, probably does have one left and well, he already rotated all the way around into uh, 
into the uh, well, little balcony right here in study. So probably we'll be opening up towards the vault. Waiting and baiting underneath. Gisk Boy is going to see if they can strike at anybody that comes a little bit too close. But with the Jackal on the board, their confidence might not be as well confident as it should be. Has the possibility for a big bit of damage here as they wait underneath. If they just get the audio from the motion, they do. They see no Claymore, but it was weighted and baited by MI7. As Gisk is the first blood in the showdown. They have the crossfire. They see an escaping Wamai. And now it's just a matter of seeing if they can get the diffuser down. They're looking to go behind the vault door, the default plant spot, as they finally find their way and swing straight in. There is no counter coming out here. QB is going to have to try and get aggro. There's the C4 just in time. The firefly burns bright. But with the diffuser picked back up and a hectic firefight on every single door possible, they just cannot find their way back in. Uh, they don't indeed. And Doctor and Hassep will be able to take uh, down that last kill. Sorry for the pronunciation. I'm absolutely terrible at this, most likely. But Merck's able to pick up that first round and take the initiative straight away. Munka is not able to uh, to eventually stick it. They got that great C4 and stopped the diffuser, but there was too little utility left to actually make sure that there was no plant going to happen in the end. Well, they're going to double down on AVG. They're going to see if they can try it again. Now, obviously, when we look at the denial there, there was, as you said, just a severe lack of it. You think of all the operators that they could have been playing in those situations. Maybe, obviously, having the Legion there, potentially having an aggressive shield, which we sometimes see just playing on that swing round. So you can apply some counter pressure to anyone that even gets close. Or, if you want to be a little bit more adventurous with it, underneath. True, there is a Jackal on the board. These guys obviously know each other much better than we do, so they'll know how to counter each other. They'll know that maybe they've already played through these motions and these steps and gone, well, they always play a Jackal. So going underneath is something that's going to be a cause and a problem for us. In the same breath, obviously, you've got to look at how you can adapt that. Maybe bringing a smoke to just apply some counter to getting in close. Maybe something that allows you to keep the hold that you had inside the gun vault without overextending and overstretching yourself. I like what they tried to do, though, on the uh, top of the brown stairs right here. You have the door to its study. Uh, the Excaros were put down onto uh, the wall from study towards uh, game room. Or aviators, I must say. Sorry. I'm, uh, I'm bullying the observer. Which normally gives you the angle into the vault, but we saw the player, instead of taking down the Excaros, he tried to like instantly challenge the uh, landing door. And I'm not too sure about it. I think it would have been better to shoot the x Kairos because it would have given more freedom to actually rotate and try to uh, to deal with stuff. Doctor not having the best of uh, connections as that's the second time he disconnects. However, this time it is, uh, is going to be an advantage for the likes of Monkey Ass. Yeah, obviously Doctor is one of the players who has quite a big show of force for Mercenaries. He's able to get in. He found two kills in the previous round. And, you know, having him go off the board first, that's your Jackal, that's your Roam Clear, but that's also your current top fragger. How important they are with that pressure that needs to be applied to actually get into the site, which is a very heavy site. Thick walls and, unfortunately, thick doors become very problematic if you don't have that kind of star tip of the spear talisman player. They're still going to try their best, as they always would, peppering bullets towards the cross corners and making sure they catch anyone that might get a bit bold towards the uh, corner of long and over across landing. Ninja Freak is going for a rotation. Whether the adaptation is coming out because they lost a the player or not, I guess is one to be seen, but I'm curious if we're going to see something from Gisk Boy again. Perfectly predicted. Medics, thank you very much. See, I'm not going to bully you like Hap is. I'm going to be complimentary. Because a Valkyrie on the Rome with a C4 here underneath can be so good. It definitely could be really impactful, especially if the C4 gets tossed up. That's a kill. Oh, no, he's waiting. That's too late now. Misses the opportunity to actually go for the kill on Taha, but he moves back. There we go. Boom. No, too late. There we go. Two opportunities. Miss Taha will survive. And that leaves us in this 4v4 situation that we uh, shouldn't have found ourselves in in the start time. We'll be able to pick up a kill and takes the favor right here towards Merck's side. 65 seconds left. They need to get a flank in now, but do they have utility to try and achieve that as they're aware of the fact that the Valkyrie is roaming? 
Now, if you want me to put this into perspective for you guys that aren't as familiar, what I've learned is generally Mercenaries and Monkus, they're both new teams. Monkus is one that's unfortunately not had the success that Mercenaries have had. They've both come together within this year, only really the past couple of months they've been able to play stuff. And in the case of Mercenaries, only a few weeks before the Open Qualifiers, before all this started. And well, they're living up to some of it so far, but there's a great battle back there from Gisk, who's able to take care with the MPX below. And again, a big kill on the roam. It's going to force the hard destruction to act a little bit quicker across the side and face of study as they look to see if they can pressure some bodies away from the default plant spot, going for the same MO because last time it worked. The barb is there. It won't stop them too heavily as they still have 15 seconds to get this down. One bit of denial here, which could have been that. Almost catches him, almost catches everything. If they'd waited a couple of extra seconds to bait the diffuser planter, it could have been monumental, but there's the spray from Ninja Freak and Hasib finds a second. It's a three versus nobody. Mercenaries, two in a row. Two in a row indeed, as Mercenaries will be able to pick up the extra kill, the rehost will be called, and that means that we are going back to us for just a small, a small bit, a few seconds to wait until uh, the new member, or, well, doctor comes back in, not really the new member. A new doctor. A new doctor. And they need a medic. Milos is... Milos. Doctor. Milos. 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 He's the kind of doctor. Milos. Um, <laughs> an optometrist. Um, does that count? I think that does count. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, we're going to have a very quick rehost. Um, obviously, as we get the player, and it's unfortunate to have your start here when it's especially been positive, be marred by technical difficulties, but again, this is one of the things about when you're developing a region, it becomes this, so, hey, let's keep this show a rolling. Now, obviously, when you talk about this kind of situation, as actually has come up in some of the tier three stuff that I've done recently in the UK, Massive, mm -hmm. I know I mention it every time, but I love them with my heart. There was a sub for a, a certain unknown player, an up-and-comer by the name of Ben Citizen McMillan, subbed in is. for a team instead of Funkers, and everyone was like, Oh, how's this going to change it? And it actually made them perform worse because it wasn't their usual roster. Now, we did just see Mercenaries take a game. They took a round with a four versus five, as if, as you put it, a player was spawn peaked. Now, they've obviously got a stand-in. They've got... They uh, get the Echo. They do have the Echo. Let's go. Defenders protect you Sorry, I'm pointing at that very quickly. Monka S have uh, picked up the Echo, and, well, I guess it's seeing how this obviously changes things. I believe the pickup there is Maker is the one who has now replaced Doctor and instantly slotted in, in the same position. Now, Maker, to be fair, was in my research for this team. Is okay. known and obviously has the tag as well. Um, so it's a player, obviously, who can bring some solidity to them. It's not going to be as out there as bringing in someone who has otherwise never really played with you or hasn't had that recent experience. You know, Maker is a flex player for them. And it's from the same region, flex is what Doctor does too. Slight differences on preference of who they want to play, but in the same breath, they've both picked up Jackal very quickly. Let's see if Mercenaries can roll it. Would you say that they have a six-man roster in this case? I would. Okay. Uh, maybe I would say they have an even more man roster, because I don't know how many fans they have. But the fans are the best member of any team's roster, Hap. That is true. Yes. That is definitely true. But no, like we used to have six-man rosters um, more often. If you if you remember, uh, OG Penta. Imagine if we could have like subs, <laughs> like in football. <laughs> like if you bring in like if the player gets tired and you just bring in a couple of extra players. It's like subbing you in. You have like an attack lineup, and you bring in a centre back towards the end if you want to keep a hold of your lead. Do we do red cards as well? Then? That'd be interesting. Yeah, I mean, well, they do. <laughs> I think I did T back. Yellow. Get sent off. That. Miss a couple of games. Turkey. Looking towards a different site now. They're looking to try and take control of Trophy Statue. Now, obviously, this is a site that offers its own difficulties and troubles. But look at the pace at which mercenaries are clearing out the other side. You'll often see some teams set an external roamer. They'll lock in towards AVG side, where we can see them roaming around now, or clearing out now, and making sure they have it locked down. They haven't done that, Monkey S. They're playing a more solid backline hold. They're locking down both sides. I'm curious to see where QB on the Valkyrie is, because so far the Valk has been their consistent roamer uh, underneath, with obviously the C4, with the cameras, a great bit of utility, but they're actually playing on site. They are playing on site as well, indeed. Um, there's quite some information being gathered right here as uh, Q is trying to deal with all this information. Spots have some of the discs and a Yokai drone as well. And in the meantime, line slowly moving up. 
up on these red stairs, wanting to go for a flank, but he's going to be taken down. Unfortunately, Maker chasing him down. will be able to pick up that kill. Instantly takes out some of the utility as well, as that is going to be putting Mercs into that driver's seat position. This time they'll start out with five. That's a bit sloppy to uh, use a double impact right there, as uh, well, it was previously spotted out by MI7. There was two of those. Well, my discs there, Fluke. They're trying to battle around the stuffed deer, but they can't quite make it land either side of that close corner, looking towards oh, the area oh. of split and looking through the skull of QB through the bomb chassis. Now they almost got the plant down. The Echo comes in clutch for there, gets the pings and stops the diffuser. They have to swing around to stop it at that moment in time, and they're going to try and double down and do it again. Now, obviously, without that Echo, they've been able to just get a bullet through and get the force down. It, down. it goes down only just. They get two kills, another one comes in for Lusty Boy. They find themselves now with a slight man advantage, but they're on the timer. There is a post-plant situation, and the watch is currently from deep. Gisk rotating the Echo Drone to give the intel is a very clever move with the Legion going down too. They're playing against the time, but underneath there's an explosion that blows the feet and the ankles, and the bullets follow through. There's one, there's a great trade. The cover comes through, a triple kill, as they've got to rotate round. They know exactly where the Echo is. He's down, and there is Legion to find it. Two men lying on the floor, but the diffuser ticks no more. If only there was a Zofia in this case. Just pick yourself up, that would have been the absolute end. But Monka will be able to pick up their first kill. Uh, oh, first round, I must say. That got some more kills, but it's going to be 2-1 now. It's trophy statuary working out a bit better for them, but still wasn't completely flawless. The plant went down, and often you see that as soon as that diffuser goes on the ground, it is really hard for an attacking team to give that one away. But it was followed up with quite some kills on the legs of Monka's side, and that is what eventually pulled them through. Firefly with a 3k there. Really, really great response to things going around. Obviously, they almost stopped the diffuser entirely in its tracks at that moment in time. The wide swing to be able to pull it yeah. apart and then go from there to get the rest of the round through. Really, really well played there. What I also really liked was the rotation underneath. They knew how their opponents wanted to play that entire post plant True. under their idea. I'm just a bit confused that what Asip was thinking as soon as he opened up from below onto the diffuser. He was looking at a horizontal level instead of actually on the diffuser already. If he would have looked there, he would have been able to pick up the kill quite clearly, not taking as much damage as he did. Would have maybe let him survive into the second gunfight as well. So it's a, uh, well, just a, a small mistake coming through. But nonetheless, Monka managing to pick up that round eventually, bringing it to 2-1, making sure that there is uh, not that big of a difference yet. Now, as they set themselves up for a, an AVG hold, obviously they've tried it twice and neither's really clicked. Hey, who's that in the hands of Gisk? Uh, um, smoke. Yeah, there we go. I'm getting that extra <laughs> denial in. I'm sorry, I had to quit. I mean, we only talked about it a lot. We only talked about it a lot, so. They, uh, yeah. they have caught on. That's good. It's good. It, it shows that they're looking for the adaptations. And obviously, when you're kind of looking and you're trying to grow on a site, having that ability to stop them being able to have the immediacy of the plant. You've got to think of it, as you said, you can play it at your feet or on the other side of the vault door to be able to stop that default plant. It doesn't entirely stop it. Obviously, if the team are cunning enough, they can dig in behind the strategy map. How oh, can we see that, Medics? And then get the diffuser uh, from that point on. Um, they're currently watching uh, I Move to Lion, Ishan, who is looking to roam around the kitchen area and seeing if they can catch anybody unaware. Now, this was another thing that we pointed out as well. The roam was a slight bit different, but Maker is actually seemingly aware of the Jaeger beneath. Trying to pop this hatch finally does. They seem to have, I'm assuming, pre-placed that's giving the game away that somebody is playing close by, and they want to try and shut him down before they go any further. Did you mean somebody or somebody? That I used to know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, Lion hoping to move up Astro Stairs, but going back down again. Just rotating and roaming a little bit on this uh, first floor, hoping to be a nuisance. Can we just quickly zoom in on the strategy table in the meantime, just so we know whether or not it is. What do you mean whether we know it is or not? It, I don't want to know if it's a strategy it's table. It's a map. It's a map, but look, 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 you see those little dots in it? It's from the game Ruse, Medics thinks. I don't know what that is, sorry. 
What's ruse? Well, a ruse is when you deceive somebody. Oh, okay. Like this man, going on the deep roam through wine. Now, wine is a floor, rarely seen, to be honest, for what is a massive play space. It's one of those areas where a lot of teams will kind of ignore it completely because it's so hefty, especially when you're looking at this site as well. There's already more than enough to rotate and cause trouble beneath. And well, going that deep means you've got to make something of it. Unfortunately, Hasib makes something of you as Ishan has taken out before they can really put any structure into their roam. Now it's just 48 seconds for them to actually try and get this plant down. Firefly still has control of Long with the Legion, making sure that nobody gets in, but there is a bit of destruction that's come from the Habana. So they're looking to try and take that from the window. You don't see that too often, because it's one of those plays where a jump out underneath could be monumentally dangerous, and there's often an extension just into this corridor with a shield. Again, Goyo, love to see it. Could be indeed, and there we go. Trying to waste the ABS if it's still there. The barbed wire will be destroyed, and that surely would be forcing Maker to go for it. But a smoke canister will be tossed in. Look at the time, 15 seconds left. They need to hurry now. Grenade will be tossed in. Maker needs to hurry up. Only now the Excarus will go up, but Lusty Boy will be able to pick up the kill. That means there is no steady control. Picks up one, and doesn't pick up the second one as Hasib will be moving. Everybody will be taken down. A double kill from QB. And it's eventually Firefly to finish it off. Round number four will go to Monka as well. It's 2-2. Two -two. Okay, I know I don't like to be like, hey, casters, we know what we're talking about sometimes. But look at how that played out. With yeah. the tweaks that we were like, this would be great, this would be the change. Haps Dream roster thrown across the top of the screen in shining lights. Okay. It worked. Too well. Too well. Monka, dude. Two rounds in a row. Let's make it three, Monkus. Monkus. Doesn't sound right. It's got to be Monka S, doesn't it? It's either Monka S or Monka you just S. say Monka. Monka. Like, hmm. 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. <laughs> two, two, mercenaries. They have to up. Obviously, it's worth pointing out that after the rehost, they are playing with a different player. They couldn't get their original roster in, which is always going to be a little bit of a, oh, uh, this isn't great. Because, yes, yeah, they are part of the roster. They are part of the org. They are part of the structure. But you go in with five of you that have been prepping for this game, getting your headspace there all day, and suddenly two rounds in, two rounds up, you have to try and change things up and change how things work together. And, well, this is what could happen. You start to slow down. You don't quite have the fire that you brought into this immediacy. Let's see if they can find it again. Because the opening two rounds, even when they were one down, they were able to find some solidity and find some comfort in the way that they could lock down what Monka S were trying to do. All right. Just got confirmation from medics. It's indeed, uh, indeed from the game booth. It's, it's a Ubisoft game. It's a Ubisoft game. A Ubisoft, a Ubisoft game and a Ubisoft game. Wow. This whole map. Would have imagined. I this mean, there's also an Assassin's Creed. Yes. Rank, this so. whole map is just Easter Thank eggs. You. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you, medics. <laughs> Love you, medics. Um, follow us Twitter at EasyR6. <laughs> I think it's EasyR6S, actually. Oh, is it? No. Oh. Well, don't follow EasyR6 then. Uh, <laughs> no, it's Medics, obviously, is observing this one. He's doing the next game into the first. Hey, this map, it's like a love letter to Ubisoft, I think. Is There's so many little, like, hey, look. Little hey, we just did, mm, there's a little, mm, there's a little sprinkling of Assassin's Creed. There's a little sprinkling Here. of Ruse. And there. I mean, maybe even the, st the statues have something uh, to do with it. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised that's the case. But, Maker, now I'm starting to look at everything as it used to. I have been turned on, but it's going to be a line that gets turned off as Maker will be able to pick up the first kill. But, Hasip follows that one up. QB taken out. MI7 takes down Firefly. Suddenly, the entirety of Monka S will be dis uh, dismantled in a heartbeat. There's going to be some track stingers deployed. It's a two and five situation with one minute and 45 seconds left on the clock fluke. That's a lot of time to hold the attackers off. Huge amount of time. Now they've kept the hatch up here hard. So often you'll see sometimes if they go for the vertical control, they'll leave it soft and try and drop over the top. Here, obviously, that hasn't quite worked. They're obviously in a situation of a five versus two where they've lost a huge amount of utility and a huge amount of possibility and what they can do to try and counter this. The, hard, the soft destruction is steadily making things harder inside the site as they look to try and get some control. And the C4 is unfortunately Unfortunately, whiffed. Doesn't catch the legs of anybody. As we hit that minute 15 mark, you can hear the hard destruction starts to make its way towards the site, and it's going to get very tricky for those bodies inside now. Um, Jigs, uh, Gisk will be taken down from top by Taha. That leaves it all up to Lusty Boy. If he can clutch just as well as Lusty can, this could be a promising round, but it's mercenaries that will be able to take that round home. It's a flawless one. And does they retake that lead after they just lost it? 
Yeah, that was a really, really well played round from them. Again, I think it kind of screams what we saw at the beginning from Monka S was they didn't really seem like they had a hold on the site itself. Very quickly, they lost a couple of bodies. Unfortunately, I believe Ishan, I mean, Lion, has been the opening death for of the five rounds so far, and generally to different members of Mercenaries every single time. Their roam game isn't quite coming through because the roam clear from Mercenaries, really, really tight. One of the things that they said to me at the very beginning of this was that we're a team that's built of IGLs. We're actually, you know, three of us were IGLs on different teams and kind of came together to build this roster. So because of that, the communication that they bring and their control and understanding of what they need to get on the map is apparently their best feature and why they're able to quite consistently get these big bits of control and try Try and just shepherd the defenders into more uncomfortable positions, most notably six feet under and watching on the cameras. Which one is the IGL, though? Uh, of the current roster? Of the three IGLs. Of the Which three IGLs? IGL, I guess it's one of the things where they kind of balance it around. They talk about it. Uh, Hasib, I believe, is the one that is the in-game IGL. The Ash, okay. Um, you see that? The yeah, that was the one that was the given to me. Um, Hasib was the... And the Ash and the Maestro player, I believe they're going to be playing on their defenses. Um, so weird combination. Yeah. Well, that's the thing as well, because I was talking to, unfortunately, the player who disconnected, Doctor was the one I was talking to about all this stuff, and he said, well, okay, every single player I talked to, when I was like, who's going to pop off? Who's the one the audience should keep their eye on? All of them said, me, and then, <laughs> and then someone else. And then someone else on this roster was actually Hasib. <laughs> Watch me. Watch me. I'm going to be great, but also so is Hasib. So if you guys want an idea of uh, who's going to be popping off on that side, that is who. You know, to watch out for the Ash mate. Mm -hmm. Getting quite some good kills. 3 2 though, in the meantime. There's uh, one more round to go before Sight Swap comes through. I think, I dare to say, Mercenaries having a pretty good health under the belts already with three attacking rounds. and. The thing is, though, they're going back to uh, to Trophy Statue, one that they managed to win before, but just barely. Yeah, and I think it's one of the ones where, obviously, it kind of came down to a one versus one firefight. There was a great quick amount of drone clear here across the big opposite side of this floor. And, yeah, there's some hard walls. There's some kind of put together of an idea of a defense, but they very quickly abandon it. And whether it's because of the pressure that's applied by mercenaries or Monka S just see this be done in other regions and want to try and adapt it into their style and don't quite have the confidence on the show day, either way, it's quick territory and quick ground that mercenaries seem very comfortable to just lock out. The grid locks is obviously a change you picked up on last round where it's going to just make those rotations that they've been quite freewheeling about even tougher. And unfortunately, for the fifth time in a row, that's Ishan off the board first. Indeed, we have to mention, though, Mercenary's been to Villa four times. Over there, I believe that was nine maps, I believe, in total, or ten maps even, um, that they have played in in the actual playoffs to get to this stage. So Villa is not unknown ground for them. As Lusty will be able to, uh, to take down one of these drones. Deny a little bit of information, but look at that. We still have about three, oh, not only three left on the board. It's not too much for mercenaries, especially not with 50 seconds left on the clock. And as there's still four players left alive, it might come to rely purely onto the gun skill of these players. And in the meantime, the plant's already going down. Are they going to be aware of that? That's the question. The Yokai drone is not in position to try and cancel and will not be in position either. And that means we're in an after plant situation. 40 seconds on the clock, Fluke. They need to go for a retake. QB will be taken down. Yes, there we go. And that leaves them very handicapped. There's the opener there under the diffuse. We saw a body around Kitchen as well. There is another rotation that's coming out from the hands, and there it is, Lusty Boy pushes around the backside and catches one as Firefly gets the top as well. They're looking to try and get the diffuser. They're gonna stick it to the best of their ability, but no, they don't get the flank watching Mercenaries. Three kills in less seconds as they lock off the end. There we go, Hasib, the play to watch. Able to clear the bottom floor and instantly snapping onto the diffuser, or the diffuse diffuser. Getting that kill in, and that means 4-2 right now for mercenaries. Normally we would say if you get 4-2 on the attack, that is super favorable, but we have heard that I believe that these two like to go to attack every now and then. Last time they were here, both teams 4-2 apiece on the attack rounds. Obviously, that is a very rare occurrence for a trip 
around the Easter egg laden mines of Villa. But in the same way, in the same method where we're talking about it, obviously this is a region we don't know. It's a region we've not really seen anything of. There was only one game streamed from the big final. And well, it was the big final. We only saw that very end reverse sweep where mercenaries went the first two maps Better down and were able to bomb. pull themselves He's back right in. Down. Very close though. There was two rounds, two rounds away from being beaten out by one of the teams we'll be seeing later today. Union, that is yes. taking on uh, Kira. And Kira is actually 3-2 ahead in maps, even though they didn't reach that upper seed. Yeah, that was one of the things as well. For those who are wondering about how it might play out a little bit later, we're looking at currently the top seed and the bottom seed. Now, Monka S, although they were able to pull a lot of rounds from teams, they were never able to actually pull any maps. They didn't take any maps from any of the other three competitors they're knocking heads with. However, Mercenaries were able to stay in the upper bracket all the way till the end to take the grand prize. The other two teams that we'll see later on today, Kira and Union, which I'm sure our analyst desk are gonna give us loads of pretty painted pictures and stories about. Well, they were viciously back and forth. Nobody out of this region could separate them. Everybody had a different answer as to who they thought would be the ones that find the way and the success today and find themselves in the final. And either way, it boiled down to a, at the end of the day, it could be either of them. So that's gonna be a very intense game to watch because apparently the boots of second and third are very much akin in pace. Look at the lineup that Mercenaries is bringing. We do see the smoke, we do see a clash, we see a Jaeger and Actually, we might as well, and then a C4 onto the bandit. So, if, if there was any lack of denying on the likes of Monkas, there is definitely no lack of denying stuff on the likes of mercenaries. And that means that Monka is going to have a really hard time, first of all, clearing out this clash. He will be surrounded by tons of anti projectile devices and potentially receiving some help from either the Vamai or Jaeger as well. Yeah, Clash currently obviously could become a big victim if they get more control over the staircase. But this is the kind of extension I was talking about that we didn't really see from Monka S. Look at the bodies that are moving and manipulating around long. Look at how they're applying some reverse pressure to the windows. They're making sure that it's not even a matter of getting comfortable close to the site. They're not letting them get comfortable on the same section of floor. They're going to keep that little bit of safety, that aura, that bubble of protection. And then they're also going to keep QB and a couple of other players under watch. Lusty is able to take care of Hasib and move to Lion, finds Maker as well. Finally finding themselves on the positive end of a firefight on their attacks. Me7 is there to get an almost a quick double leading to a triple. The man is down. But with Firefly on the opposite side of a very tough journey, it's gonna be a long trip, unfortunately, into the next round. It's Mi7 to uh, secure that round. Mercenaries with that to put themselves up to five rounds. Many might have expected that, but they're putting it up on the board now. 5-2, two, two away from winning map number one. Two away from setting your first foot into that grand final. So far, every single round, the opening kill has gone to the side of mercenaries. Every single time they've been able to get that opener. And how important that has been for them, I guess can be obviously seen in the results. Me seven, nine kills, one death. After rehost. After rehost. So yeah. there's even more kills. And did get killed. Well, got the opener of the entire game against I mean. Gisk. So, oh. hey, they've come here swinging. That's the thing about this roster as well, is they are new. Both of these two are. Maybe that's one of the reasons that Kira and Union are so hard to separate, is because they are two long standing rosters. Ones that have been around the scene as their kind of entity, whether it's been a core of three or four, either way, you have a beating heart of a team, you build the body around it, whether you change your arm into a cool new robot arm that's actually a fragger instead of a flex player, it's still the same person, it's still the same body. These are two fresh bodies put together like Frankenstein's monster and today they're trying to shoot each other. And I think in ways it's kind of a little bit more apparent. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with the analogy right here. <laughs> you know, which of these players has a metallic yeah, arm, would you say? Um, well, no, that's the next oh, the two team. teams. You're oh, not listening okay. to me. Sorry, sorry. I, I, was, I was confused. <laughs> Listen up. If you have the same heart, mind, and soul of a team, mm -hmm. whether you give them a fresh, cool new arm or not, won't change the heart, mind, and soul. Whereas this, 
is a fresh heart, a fresh mind, a fresh soul, and a fresh arms and legs all together because that's all you need to make a person. I am not the doctor out of this broadcast team. I am not the one with a physics degree. You don't watch anime either, right? I'm not the one that watches anime or does no, whatever Des does. Des wears wears t-shirts of his own company. So, uh... I'm not... <laughs> I'm not Statman. I'm the Stand one... Up. I am Bridget Bardo. <laughs> I'm the one that shouts really loudly about things very quickly. I like the holder trying to put up here into walking closet. Trying to deny it, but look at that. The body blocking from MI7 onto these flashbangs, making sure that the uh, C4 coming actually through, but will not be hitting. I like the body blocking, I'm going to say again, blocking out the ADSs. This is the hold I was talking about, exactly where Mi7 is. One of the things where you get a bit external. You lock yourself in with a Wamai, with a dock, with loads of ADSs, and you just eat all of the utility because teams laser focus in on you. They try and get you out. They put everything they can into getting control and it makes them a little bit off the piece. It makes them a little bit unsure of how they can actually enter and how they can actually take this bedroom. So they're free to stay in there. And hey, who am I? The longer he's alive, the more powerful he gets. Unfortunately, it's not going the same way for the other members of Mercenaries. Worth pointing out, this is the first round. They haven't actually got the opening kill, and they've got the first three deaths instead. A five versus two goes down to a four versus two from a team kill. Gisk accidentally taking care of the Habana and the hard destructions off, but now it is only down to the unfortunate Riho standing down to two, but unfortunately falls one short. Ishan. A player who unfortunately couldn't quite find any ground in the opening half of this villa locks off the round, which is the first on the board in quite a while for Monkas. The main issue I had with the hold right there um, was the fact that they had no information. And yes, you can play in walking closet and you can make it very viable. But if you're not going to get any information, there's three angles you have to worry about. The bathroom, the actual closet window, and the bedroom itself. Now, it is easily solvable. You bring an Ella. You get these Grismod mines, you bring the FO12 shotgun, meaning you only need one shot on that range, and it's absolutely a bunker that no one will be able to come through. However, they did not, they did not bring that, and thus, it was pretty easily uh, to, to crack through that defense. Yeah, it's one of those things, obviously, yeah, where, okay, here's a good idea. Here's what we're seeing teams do and how they're adapting to it. And again, you look at how long Wamai's been in the play pool, it's a new adaptation. It's a new flavor to the wonderful buffet Villa can offer defenders. But as you said, just being able to replicate some of the bits does in no way guarantee the results we see these top teams, the ones that are consistently pushing this tactical development envelope and how they can kind of structure themselves. The most obvious example is the SSG defense. To them, by them, it looks easy. It's clockwork. Every angle and every idea has been thought about by the big brains of Lycan, Canadian, and everybody else on that team who are phenomenal. Then we start to see a lot of other teams try it. They have a look at the fact that they've brought a castle and they've thrown a vigil or a mozzie upstairs. Oh, it's way more than that. It is. I'm just, I'm not really sure the setup they're putting. Can we just quickly zoom in onto walking closet? Because I like, I'm a fan of playing a shotgun in this space, right? Yeah. Because you're going to be able to play around with it a lot. Now I get what MI7 is doing here, but he also has a shield. Put the shield in the door right here instead of where Mind Freak is currently, uh, Ninja Freak is currently playing. He could be playing from the bathroom, still be, you know, not being able to be hit by anything. Ninja goes inside with the walking closet, the Wamai supports from the back. You just swap those two around. Wamai tosses in these discs time and time again every single second to just make sure that no projectiles will come through and suddenly have a way more viable hole. IQ doing the work they need to there and being able to take care of the Valkyrie cams to lead the lead in Ninja. Lying in wait and living up to his name as we see some ADS start to be burnt and a C4 tears and blows on nobody. Lusty Boys battling Hasib on the window. Again, a big player to look out for because they were harped as being a big entry. There is another disc thrown to the wall by Mi7. Put in an angle where it's just a little bit tough to see and a little bit harder to hit, but in no way impenetrable. He is desperate to get aggro on this window. He wants this firefight and wants this bloodshed. But Hasib is the one that gets the first and the second falls very quickly to Mi7, who finds just one more body. Now, it is a three versus five. They still have the diffuser, have the hard destruction, and a lot of soft too, but unfortunately that's getting thinner and thinner as Mi7 in the walk-in claims a second. 
Gresham really working out now as Fireflies are receiving some pressure as well. There's 80 seconds on the clock and well, Monka find themselves in a two on four situation. Still really occupied with that walking closet. And now the jump in will come through, but he's getting fully flashed by his teammate right there. Are they aware of the fact that he is inside? That is the big question here. And while well, looking Ninja Freak, he's still available right here to put up some damage, but he will be taken down. Suddenly we find ourselves in a two on three situation active. As me seven is still down, the reset comes through. Firefly will be picked back up, but 55 seconds is still plenty of time to work with. You just need to find the right angles. Firefly soon. Jumping in that walking closet. Has to be careful though. Has Seab in the meantime. Put himself into a position to actually get some information out. Really smart play right here. But the drone not giving away anything. The jump it's come through. Firefly will be taken down. It's going to be time with the final one as well. And to guess, can mercenaries will be able to win round number nine. Put themselves up onto six. And that means one away from that point. Well, that was a little bit more confidence in the hold. And if anything, a bit more confidence in the guns and mercenaries. We saw both Hasib and Mi-7 challenging the two windows that they were put under the guard of. Obviously, towards the astro stairs, it was against the man on the window. Upside down, repelling and trying to cause problems there is a big part of your push against here. You have to be able to lock off the escape angles. You have to try to isolate, infiltrate, and another word that ends in eight that is about killing. I was going to say exonerate. Assassinate. That's so much better than any of this. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. No worries. <laughs> Either way, you have to be able to have that pinch. Because if you don't, if you lose just a fraction of ground in Villa, it's such a big map that it makes things harder Attack for the attackers. Because it's so easy for uh, defenders to slip away. And then I've already briefly mentioned the huge heft that the wine offers, that you have an entire floor that is rarely touched, that is purely built for rotation and escape. Maybe we'll see some of that become a dynamic part of these teams. You never really know on Villa, because as I said, it's big. It is very big indeed, but keep in mind, we see the same setup coming down again from round number seven, that was, where Mercenaries completely picked apart Monka. As the Clash comes back, the Jaeger and the Mike combination is there as well. The smoke will be brought with that shield. And then we have to bend it with that 1C4 piece to finish it all off. And well, there is uh, only three x Kairos available for Harbreach. And we'll have to use them well. And if, again, these Bennett batteries will be put up the same day as they were before, they need to go for a fall push. Otherwise, there's nothing they can do. That is so aggressive from Ninja There's nothing Freak. they can do against it. No, that's it. They obviously, they have Ash and they have Sophia, but until you're close enough to try and capitalize upon that, all Ninja Freak has to do is, oh, just a jump to the left or a step to the right. And then they're completely safe from anything that might be trying to cause them harm from a huge amount of range. Now they're taking control underneath. It's a particular Claymore in that situation. I'd be surprised if that catches anyone, but generally what we've seen from Mercenaries is they're not going too huge on the roam. They're all the way across the top floor, sure. You see them on the far side towards Astro, with Maker playing as the connector towards landing, but in the same breath, they're not playing on that first floor. They're happy to say, come up to us, and we will meet you with the firepower you should expect. And there it is, Mi7 opens it up yet again against the QB. Have to be careful though, because I believe Hasip is down prone, hoping to challenge down on the Sophia, who is playing down below. And it's Gisk right here from the winner, hoping to put down some pressure line. In the meantime, below as well, but there's a Roma actually here. He's going to be able to somehow pick up that kill. Taha messing it up. He's going to be able to uh, bring it back to a 4-4, four four though, as extra flashbangs are being tossed in. And just that, that, that stun keeps on coming through from Ninja Freak onto these players. And yet again, look at how focused they are, how lasered they are on the likes of Study. As Move Lion will be able to pick up a double kill, takes down Maker in the process. And that means that they are actually in the advantage right now. Monka has, has that one man advantage. Are they going to be able to push on in it? Not really, as uh, Me 7 will be able to pick up a double kill for himself. It's going to be Ninja Freak now on that clash, playing a crucial position as he's actually occupying two players right here from that study door. He's going to be able to hold them off for quite some time right here. But look at the time, uh, Fluke. There's still a minute left. That's plenty of time to actually make something happen on the attack. Yeah, they're trying to get a bit of confidence on the landing side. They're looking to just pinch again, as I talked about. It's a game and it's a map of finding the hole, finding the sides. Ooh. And unfortunately for Me7, well, I say unfortunately for Monka S, Me7's playing find the heads of anyone who gets close. This close shotgun again in the hands of the smoke. This is exactly what we wanted. And Hasib is delivering it. There's Clash. 
Stemming the roll, there's the swing against the man. Isn't gonna risk it, it's just gonna go for the most important bit, which is the utility. Fires into the smoke and finds them anyway. It's a three versus one. The only hope they have left on Villa is a buck against the Clash who tried to bikini Bodhi. But unfortunately, it went, oh no, D. <laughs> Come on, Blue. <laughs> Can't do that on the last one. He tried to go for a 360. <laughs> All right, nice one. Okay, I'm gonna give you that. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> it's okay, famous French actor hat. <laughs> I mean, for me, I think obviously mercenaries, they were technically the favorites. They were number one. They were in such a good position. Look at me, seven. A 15 to two, oh my, my God. word.